By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to another Tribal Wars match. Today we are going to look at Minotaurs versus Knights. And um, I'm really looking forward to this. So if you've missed the other episodes, this is what is going on. I've organized a tribal tournament like to celebrate all the different tribes in old school. And the rule is quite simple. You have to pick a tribe and 12 creatures of that type have to be in your deck at all times. Now to make more tribes possible for the players, so to give them some more options, I've allowed homelands and fallen empires and you can also choose creatures from your tribe out of Ice Age. So you cannot have access to the full set of Ice Age, but if you find, for example, a knight in Ice Age, you can play that in your deck if your tribe is knights. Now, if you're kind of curious, like what is he talking about he can't follow, check the description below for all the ins and outs about the rules. And in that same description, you can also find several timestamps. For example, the timestamp that reads MTG Games. If you click on there, it will take you straight to the action of this video. And like I said, we're going to look at a match between Knights and Minotaurs. I'm gonna now start with the deck deck and I'm gonna start with the Knights deck by Beastie Boss. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Beastie Boss, Abyss Knights and Robots. And his main tribe is of course Knights. He's playing with 12 Knights in this deck. That is the minimum, right? So if you have a tribal deck, 12 creatures need to be of the same creature type. And at all times, also after sideboarding, you have to keep 12 knights in your deck. You can, of course, swap one knight out for another. For example, in this deck, if you're playing against black, you could swap out two white knights for two northern paladins. That's absolutely an option because then he's still playing with 12 knights. Now, um, Boss has also taken advantage of that rule that you can uh, choose creatures from Ice Age as long as they support your tribe so they have to be part of your tribe and they can only be creatures so in this case he's picked a full playset of the order of the white shield the pump knight from ice age we also see the fallen empire's pump knight so order of the white shield two white to cast for a two one creature that has protection from black for one white you can give it first strike and for two white you can give it plus o plus uh, sorry plus one plus o now this this is really a good card i mean I understand you look at the one toughness and you think, oh, it's so easy to get rid of. But trust me, it's hard to deal with in combat because of that first strike and pump ability. And and yeah, if, if you play with red, it, I guess it's kind of easy to get rid of it. But there a lot of people don't play with red. And even if your opponent is playing with red, it's still going to cost them a burn spell. So, I mean, this is really a good creature. And because we're allowing this Ice Age creature in, we're also allo allowing Fallen Empires in. So we also see the Order of Lightbird. So he's basically playing with eight pump knights. And then with, uh, of course, the OG White Knight as well. So he's combining that with his robots. And why is he combining that with artifact creatures? That is because, of course, he's playing with three Abysses. So the Abyss is a world enchantment from Legends that reads, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player's control of their choice. It cannot be regenerated. But let's look at the list again of Bus here. All the white creatures have protection from black, so they cannot be destroyed by the Abyss. And the rest of the creatures... They're artifacts. Again, they cannot be destroyed of the abyss um, by the abyss. So the strategy here is pretty clear, right? Boss is going to play the abyss, which is going to kill the opponent, uh, the creatures of his opponent, but it's not going to kill his creatures. Pretty smart there, boss. Uh, by the way, one card I really like in this deck is Angelic Voices because it pumps white creatures and artifact creatures, so that's really nice. Overall, this is looking like a pretty, pretty strong deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, and that is Tom, and he's playing with Minotaurs. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Tom. So the name is Labyrinth, of course, uh, referring to the Minotaur that was in a Labyrinth, according to legend. And we see a lot of Minotaurs here. And the cool thing about the Tribal Wars is that we've allowed Homelands as a set. You can just pick all the cards from Homelands. We did restrict a few cards. Uh, we even banned a card. Uh, it was this enchantment from Red. So, there, you know, we've, we've looked critically at the set to make sure that there was nothing in there that could kind of ruin the joy. But of course, Homelands is not that strong. But I think by adding Homelands, you're allowing people to make decks like this, which I think is super cool. So now we've got a Minotaur tribal deck. Now, if we look at the Minotaurs, we see, of course, a Maze of If, which is so on flavor. And under there, we kind of see all the Minotaurs. So maybe I can just discuss a few. We see the Anava Shaman, which is kind of the red Timmy. It's a one red and three to cast for this creature. It is a uh, one one, no, it's a two two creature, summon Minotaur, one red and tap, and Anava Shaman deals one damage to target creature or player. And yes, this is a bad card, but still, it's also super annoying. Remember, Boss is playing with all those one toughness bump knights. This is the super answer 
for that threat. Um, we're also seeing an Anaba Spirit Crafter, which is of course also a summon Minotaur that says all the Minotaurs gain plus one plus oh, so it kind of has this Lord Anthem effect. There's also an Anaba Ancestor, which is a summon ghost, but has been upgraded to a Minotaur as well that you can tap and that gives target Minotaur plus one plus one until end of turn. So it can pump another Minotaur. So I just think it's super cool to see all these Homeland cards. We also see Labyrinth Minotaur, which of course really fits into the theme of the deck, you know, the name uh, of the deck. And Labyrinth Minotaur, Minotaur is a blue one. Uh, it's one blue and three to cast for a one four. And it reads, creatures the Minotaur is uh, assigned to block do not untap during the controller's next untap phase. So it's kind of this little annoying Minotaur and it, it functions almost as a royal assassin. When you've got this on the, on the board, your opponent just doesn't want to attack. You know, it's like, ah, oh, man, it's, one of my creatures is going to be blocked by the Minotaur. And yes, it's not going to die because the Minotaur only has one uh, power, but I'm going to lose it for a full turn. Do I really want to swing in and attack? So it kind of slows down your opponent. Talking about slowing down, there's this super counter spell that I never understood as a child, but I do so, so much appreciate it. Now it's memory lapse, one blue and one for an interrupt counter target spell, put that spell on top of its owner's library. I remember like back in the day when I saw it for the first time, I was like, what a crap card. You're going to counter something and then it's not going to be in the graveyard, but your opponent is going to draw it again the next turn. So the threat is back. How is this helping me? But this is the perfect card to slow down your opponent. And nothing is more annoying, I can tell from experience, than when you already know what you're going to draw. It kind of feels like you're standing still, like you're stuck in time, which is, of course, ideal if you can do that to your opponent. So Memory Lapse, I really appreciate that card now. I know how strong it is. And when we look at the cards that uh, Tom is playing to support his Minotaurs, these are some really good cards. So Memory Lapse is one of them, but I also like the full playset of Control Magics. Tom knows that he's playing in a Tribal Wars tournament. He knows that every deck has to have at least 12 creatures. So control magics are ideal in that environment. He can start stealing everything. And yes, of course, boss is playing with disenchants, but still, I think it's a really good choice to have these uh, in his deck. And also remember, uh, boss is playing with the abyss. So, you know, Tom is probably gonna lose a lot of minotaurs to the abyss. And then at least with control magic, he can steal some of the creatures of, uh, of boss. And that means that, you know, all those creatures don't die to the abyss. So at least he's got something and maybe he can even kill boss with his own weapons. And then of course we have a nice red direct damage department with two fireballs, three lightning bolts and a single shatter. So of course those fireballs and lightning bolts are going to do really well against all those knights. Then there's one last card that I want to point out and that is Aaron the Relentless. Aaron the Re Relentless, such a badass dude. Uh, two red and three to cast for a 5-2 creature that can attack the turn it comes into play and for three red you can regenerate it. So it's, it's a really good surprise card and what I love about this card is that it stays in the game. It's not like Bow Lightning. So it can attack the turn it comes into play and it stays in the game. I think it's just awesome. This whole deck, by the way, I think it's it's a super cool deck photo. I really like the theme. I like the name Labyrinth. I just think the deck is really cool. I think both decks look really, really solid, really good. So this is going to be an exciting match. We've looked at the deck of uh, Bus. We've looked at the deck of Tom. And that means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Minotaurs versus Knights. Game number one, here we go. So on the right, we have Boss playing with his Ebis Knights. And he's taken a mulligan, it seems, putting a card there on the bottom, starting with the planes. And on the left, we have Tom, who's playing with his deck Labyrinth, the Minotaur deck. He's starting with one red and a pass. And here's Boss, probably going to play a second white and play out a knight. Yep, there's the planes. Are we going to see a white knight? A white knight could have been, of course, an order of uh, the white shield or an order of light bird, but it's a white knight. 2-2, first strike, protection from black. It goes together really well, of course, with the Abyss plan. And Tom playing out a second blue. And what is he going to do? Okay, there's that 1-1 one, one Minotaur. You can tap it to give target Minotaur plus one, plus one, a card from Homelands. And I wonder now if Boss is asking, what does that card do? Because I, I wouldn't hold it against you, Boss. I, I am pretty knowledgeable with Homelands, but even I had to look up some cards in the deck of Tom before making this video. Here we see uh, Mishra's factory and an attack, of course, with the knight. So that's 18. I wonder if bosses can play another knight. Oh, he's playing a Yoshin soldier. So it's a 1-4 artifact creature that can attack without tapping. So immediate pressure here by boss. Next turn, he could attack potentially for five damage if he animates the factory. Let's see what Tom can do, if he can find some defenses. 
A Labyrinth Minotaur would be quite handy because it's 1-4. But he's just passing the turn. Does mean he's got mana open for a potential memory lapse if boss plays out another creature. Another land, so that's another plains. Hasn't found any black sources yet, or maybe he keeps his black sources on hand and only plays it out if he wants to play a black card. So attacking here for five, is Tom gonna take the full damage? Then he will drop to 13. And yep, he's taking the full damage. He's gonna drop to 13. And there we see an Order of the White Shield. A 2-1 Pump Knight from Ice Age. It's got protection from black. For one white, you can give it first strike. And for two white, you can give it plus one, plus O. Oh. And this is kind of the game that uh, Boss wants to play. Just early pressure, keep smashing on. And as soon as Tom is gonna play some bigger threats, Boss can play out a potential abyss to get rid of those. And it looks like there are some issues with the screen there. We see Boss uh, putting his hand there, making sure everything works, works properly. And uh, I believe it's Tom's turn now. He's a little bit in the tank, it seems. He's on 13, of course. He's got some uh, early pressure to deal with. Only has that 1-1 one, one Minotaur on the board. And there we see Tom in action. There's a Control Magic. He is playing, of course, with a full playset, taking the White Knight. The problem, of course, of that is that the White Knight is tapped, so he cannot use it as a blocker next turn. So now Boss can attack. Remember, if he's got enough mana, he can even pump his Order of the White Shield to deal more damage. Another Factory. Okay, so he can use that Factory to pump the Factory, so that's another potential 5 points of damage. If he pumps the Shield, 6 points of damage. Tom is already on 13. So this is pretty dangerous. Actually, he can deal seven points of damage, but um, he's animating the factory, it seems. Yes, he is. Okay, so he's gonna swing in for five. He can pump the factory, deal six damage. Then he can pump the Order of the White Shield, deal seven damage in total. If he does that, Tom is gonna drop back to six measly life. So Tom kind of needs a miracle here in game one. Just a lot of pressure here from Boss from the get-go that turned to White Knight. And after that, he never stopped casting creatures and putting creatures sideways. So there we see Tom dropping to six, I believe. At least he's got, he now has an untapped White Knight. That is something. So he can use that as a blocker. It looks like uh, Boss is... No, he's not frozen. Perhaps Tom just needs a lot of time here to think what his next move is going to be. Tapping two blue. Okay, tapping two red as well. Are we going to see another control magic? Okay, now this is starting to look like something. Tom is simply stealing everything away from boss. And that is, of course, a great move. There we see a strip mine, which is a great weapon against the factories. And Tom could, of course, decide to already strip. Yeah, strip a factory straight away. Could have wait, waited until the attack step, but maybe this is better because then you're also taking a mana away from boss. I mean, I think if you're boss, you just need a disenchant. If you can find a disenchant, for example, a disenchant on the white knight would mean he can, out at the, he can at least attack with the Yoshin soldier and the factory. But if he cannot find a disenchant, you know, uh, it's going to be tricky for him. Of course, Tom doesn't have access to white, so he cannot pump the order of the white shield, but... It's still a 2-1. There we see a Mox Jet. And... Okay, there we see. So we see that Tom is using Order of Lightbearer as a proxy there for the Order of White Shield. They're basically the same cards. Ooh, this is interesting. A Demonic Tutor here for Boss. I wonder what he's going to tutor for. I mean, he could tutor for a disenchant, but it's not really going to help him that much. It only gets rid of one control magic, I guess. I guess he can then kind of have pressure back in the game, but I think he's going to tutor for something else. I mean, the fact that he's taking his time means that, I mean, that he hasn't decided yet himself as well. He's trying to figure out what is the best thing to tutor here. Going through his deck again, you can see it there at the bottom. The thing is, when you're tutoring, you preferably want to have something that has a bigger impact than just disenchanting one control magic, but I'm trying to think about it. It's, it's quite tough. 
And boss, of course, is so close to victory. Tom's on six. I mean, he doesn't have access to any direct damage or else the, uh, the choice would be easy. So going through his deck again. Trying to figure out what to do. So he's playing with the colors white and black. He could go, of course, for a mind twist. Twisting away Tom's hand. That, that is an option. It's not going to change anything about the board, but... Th the problem with that scenario, though, is for Busted. He has to give Tom another turn. He doesn't have a black to actually cast the mind twist straight away. He used, of course, the mana from his Mox Jet to cast the Demonic Tutor. Okay, so it looks like he's made his choice. Shuffling his library again. There we see that card there on the Mishra's Factory. I really wonder what it is. It looks like he's not quite sure though, going through his library again. This is really tough here for, for Boss. It looks like he's made up his mind though. Now he is really going to shuffle. And put the library back. And I, I really wonder what card it is. <laughs> Maybe we'll see that next turn. Because it looks like he's not going to play anything out anymore. Putting his hand there on the table, and I believe passing a turn or not. Okay. Yep, passing the turn. We see the untap there by Tom. There we see a disenchant after the untap. So perhaps he did look up a, a disenchant there. So getting back the uh, the order of the white shield, and that makes sense, of course, because he can pump it up. Two white give it plus one plus zero, oh, and uh, one white for first strike. And Tom drawing a card for turn now because he uh, that disenchant by bus was played in the upkeep, of course. Untap upkeep and then you get the draw. And I think this is a good move by, by boss. I mean, ooh, tapping five. Are we going to see Aaron the Relentless? Yeah, Aaron the Relentless. And we see the beautiful altar, Theseus. That is so nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't make sense for Tom to attack here. That would be really, really bad. But it is, of course, a super cool card. It's really cool to see that in the deck here of Tom and to see it in action. And there we see a pass and untap by Boss. Two cards in hand for Boss. And ah, this is kind of hard for him. I mean, he can attack with the Order of the White Shield. But then Tom can trade it, White Knight, for Order. And then things are kind of looking up for Tom if Boss does that. So I think Boss is just not going to attack. Of course, I don't know what he's got in hand. And um, yeah, Boss really in the tank here trying to think, what can I do? Can I find... A hole in the defenses of Tom. Tom, of course, being on six, he's so close. So he is going to animate. No, he's not. The problem, of course, with animating it is Tom can now block the factory on the White Knight, kill the factory. But the advantage for Bus is that he possibly gets some points in if he attacks. And Bus also knows that starting next turn, Tom can keep three red open to regenerate. Aaron the Relentless. So Bus kind of has an opening here because Tom doesn't have the mana to regenerate Aaron, but he doesn't have an opening here because Bus has that untapped, or sorry, Tom has that untapped White Knight, which is just an ideal blocker in this scenario. Playing out a land, so it looks like he's not really going to do anything. Actually, that land, um, it can... Return a Legends card back to its owner's hand, uh, Caracas. So he can use that land to send back Aaron the Relentless. So actually, it is relevant. It 
took me a moment to realize that that Caracas is actually relevant. It looks like Boss still thinking about what to do. It, it's look like, it looks like he's using his Karakas here to send back Aaron the Relentless. Dare we see an attack? Attacking for five here. The question here is, is Tom gonna block the factory? Ooh, look at that. He's going to sacrifice, going to throw his uh, Minotaur in front of the bus to block the order of the White Shield there. So, bus is giving the order first strike, killing the Minotaur. And I think the White Knight actually survives. He is putting it in the graveyard, but I think the White Knight is still alive. Because it's a 2-2 first striker, it blocked the factory worker, and that was a 2-2 assembly worker. So the Mishra's factory died. So it is still in the game, so Tom still has that White Knight. Are we going to see a recast of Aaron the Relentless? Another control magic, wow! So Tom finding his third control magic here. And these control magics are really winning the game for Tom. Well, not winning actually, but they're keeping Tom alive. I need to rephrase that because Tom's on five and, and Bus is on, uh, sorry, yeah, Tom's on five and Bus is on 20. Another knight here being uh, played by Bus. But Bus is, Bus is stuck at the moment. Yeah, now he's putting the white knight back into, the, into play because it's still very much alive. So only one card in hand here. For boss, and there's that pass. Two cards in hand, it seems, for Tom. Or not, not quite clear. I think they're discussing, maybe that, that card dropped off and when Tom was, was getting a card. So they're putting it randomly back in the library, okay, because I think Tom had more cards in hand than just two. Could be mistaken though. So Tom has that Aaron the Relentless, of course, in his hand, but remember, Boss has the Karakas to send it back. So here we see a mountain. Paying four, okay, Jam Day Tom, this is really good. For Tom, you know, when you're in the standstill and you've got a tome, that's awesome. There we see an angelic voices. So that's going to give all the creatures of boss plus one plus one. I mean, he could attack here with the ocean soldier, actually, because it's now a two five. I mean, that is not too bad. I mean, a 2-5 is going to put Tom in a, in a difficult situation. Remember, Tom doesn't have any white mana. Exactly, there's a double attack. I, this makes sense. He cannot pump his own order of the white shield. He cannot kill the ocean soldier. It's a 2-5. This is really interesting. So, Boss, of course, can make a trade. But he cannot give his order for a strike. Look at that. So, he's blocking... The White Knight, if he's blocking, oh, he's blocking the White Knight, which is just uh, with the Order of the White Shield. And the Order of the White Shield doesn't have first strike, even if it, if, even if it did, it, it is just a 2-1. And of course, Boss, his White Knight, is now a 3-3 because of the Angelic Voices. This is really good news for Boss, and we see Tom dropping to 3 now. If Tom can find a Fireball, he can kind of Fireball his way out of it. Can he? Not really, though. Because he's going to need almost all his mana to kill that Yoshin soldier. And then he's still looking down at that White Knight. I mean, a Lightning Bolt would be nice right now, because he can just, you know, he can bolt the White Knight of Boss. He can chump block the Yoshin soldier or go to one. Of course, that's another option. 
Let's first see what he's going to do. Tapping four here. Another control magic. Insane. Control magic number four. What an insane first game this is. I mean, Tom should have been dead and buried long gone, but the control magics keep saving him. He's now drawn all four control magics. And I, I know what bus is going to board in after game one. Those are disenchants that he's going to board in. I'm quite sure of it. I believe he's only pay, playing two disenchants main. But I mean, this is very unlucky for Bus as well that he's like facing four control magics in this game. Tapping three here. There we see another Yoshin soldier. Now remember, Angelic Voices only works for the creatures of Bus. So Tom doesn't get that bonus. So that means the Yoshin soldier of Bus is a 2-5 and the Yoshin soldier of Tom is still a 1-4. And that makes a big difference. But Tom has that book, so the longer the standstill stays, the better it is, of course, for Tom with that book. Tapping two here. What is he going to cast? Okay, there's another one of those 1-1 one, one Minotaurs that you can tap to give target Minotaur plus one plus one. Tapping four. Is he going to draw a card here with the Tome? No! He's going to play a Shaman. Anaba Shaman. A one, no, a two-two. One red and tap, deal one damage to any target. And I mean, Tom is making it really tough for Bus to find a way through, you know. I mean, Bus just needs like a flying creature or some way to deal direct damage. But those things are just not in his deck. So two cards in hand, staring down at a full board on the side of Tom. And he is attacking here with the 3-3 White Knight and the 2-5 Yoshin Soldier. I think I would just put that 1-1 Minotaur in front of the bus, to be honest, and I would block the Yoshin on the Yoshin. And bus, of course, attacking right now because he knows that Tom can start using his... Uh, his Shaman next turn, starting to ping one damage, a point a turn. But more importantly, using that one point of damage in combat where it can be uh, vital. Looks like he's blocking the White Knight. Ooh, he's blocking on three creatures. He really wants that Yoshin Soldier to die. So Yosh Yoshin Soldier has five toughness. So this actually kills the Yoshin Soldier. And the Yoshin Soldier can only kill one creature on the side of, of Tom. This is a really good block by Tom, this three-way block. I kind of expected him to just throw the 1-1 one, one Shaman in front of the bus. But this has worked out perfectly for Tom. Losing the White Knight, but killing that Yoshin Soldier on the side of bus. This is a great block from Tom. And now Tom can, of course, attack with the Yoshin, deal one point of damage. First, he's going to draw a card with the Jam Day Tome. Is Tom going to find a way to victory in this game one? Because... It looked really, really, really bad for him. He's on three, but right now he's got the upper hand. And I think he's attacking with Yoshin here. I would just attack with the Yoshin, put him on 19 past turn. Yeah, that's what I would do. You know, he could also attack with the 1-1, one, one, of course. Deal two points of damage. Okay, that's what he's going to do. I would be even more conservative, but that, that's just me. So he's on 18. So Bus's White Knight is a 3-3, but of course, uh, Tom has that stolen Yoshin Soldier. There's a Suchi. Okay, now this is a pretty big creature. Also a 5-5 because of the angelic voices. Are we going to see a memory lapse? There's a memory lapse. Ho ho! Putting the card back on top of Bus's deck. And this is going to buy Tom some time. Going to ping Bus here for one with the Anaba Shaman. He's going to take his turn. He's got a lot of lands, which is good news. Because he's got the Jam Day Tome that he can use his mana for. He's got five mountains and three islands. 
Tapping four, using the book. I mean, the book is so good late game because you've got enough mana to use it. You've got enough mana to play something out. You've got enough mana to potentially keep like a memory lapse. Okay, and there we see, I believe, is this called the Spirit Crafter? Gives all the Minotaurs plus one, plus oh. So it's a, it's a modest boost. And here we see Tom also pointing it out. So he now has a 2-1 and a 3-2 Minotaur. It's really sweet to see Minotaur Tribal in action here. But those control magics have really, really saved Tom. You know, finding all four control magics in this uh, in this match is just insane in this game, I should say. There we see a Suchi here again, coming back, of course, from boss after that counter spell earlier, that memory lapse. And I, I think if you're if you're boss next turn, you're just gonna attack with your 5-5. Five five. And then probably Tom is gonna, you know, maybe triple block again, who knows? But next combat step is going to be interesting just to see if Bus is going to attack with the Tsuchi and how Tom is going to block. Of course, maybe Tom can here find a, a Shatter. He's playing with one Shatter main and he could destroy the Tsuchi using his book again. I mean, Tom has got card advantage now with the book. So it's really important for Bus to try to finish this game as quickly as he can because the longer the game takes, the bigger the chances that Tom's going to take over. An Abyss would be really sweet now as well for Boss, by the way. He hasn't found a single Abyss. Playing with three Abyss main. Is he going to attack with the Suchi? So really kind of inquiring about the power and, and the creatures that Thomas on his side of the board. So he's got, I believe, oh, is that Spirit Crafter? I believe it's a 2-2. Two -two. I'm not quite sure. And then we've got the 1-1 one, one that's now a 2-1 and a 3-2. And, of course, the Yoshim Soldier, which is a 1-4. So if Boss attacks, he can just put his 2-1 and 3-2 in front of it to kill the Suchi. But he's got other options as well. He can, of course, decide, you know, not to attack, which is always an option. But like I said, the problem is, okay, he's passing turn, not attacking uh, a ping here from Tom. The problem is the longer this standstill takes, the bigger the chance that Tom's going to win. Because of, of course, the Shaman dealing a damage return, but also because of the Jam Day Tome, or more so, I should say, because of the Jam Day Tome. What is he going to do? It looks like he's going to tap quite a lot. Are we going to see a Fireball, for example, here on the Suchi? Is he going to try to kill two birds with one stone? Oh, he's going to play a Brain Geyser. Oh, even more card advantage. This is looking really bad for Boss. This game one is really slipping away from him here. Tom is on three. Remember that. But, I mean, it's looking so good for him now. And now it's that Brain Geyser on top of all that card adventure that he already had. There we see a Lightning Bolt on the White Knight. Taking care of that, probably just going to pass. And Boss finding a Savannah there. I mean, an Abyss at least can do something for him, kind of clearing the board, but it looks like he's not finding one this game. Two cards in hand, I believe, passing to turn out back to Tom. Tom is going to ping for one, putting Boss here on 14. What can he do? So many cards in hand now for Tom, of course, after that Brain Geyser. If Tom can now just destroy, like, Fireball Suchi. Okay, there we see the Labyrinth Minotaur, the 1-4 from Homelands. Which is now a 2-4 because of the pump effect. If Tom can find a way to get rid of the Suchi, this game can be over quite fast because he's got a lot of creatures on the board. There is a City of Brass. Golden Bordered, so it's from one of those World Championship decks. And he's passing the turn here to Bus. 
Interesting. Tapping two. Okay, there is a city in a bottle taking care of that city of brass, but that's all it does really. Has a very low impact on the board, but it's better than nothing. And I think if, I mean, I think if you're a boss, you kind of know what's going to happen. Obviously, he's hoping on some kind of out, but yeah, an abyss, again, an abyss would be quite good, but he needs to draw one fast, though, because all an abyss does is it only destroys one creature every upkeep, so it goes quite slow. Here we see Tom pinging and drawing an extra card. And Tom is, I think, really looking for that one fireball or, or shatter to destroy the Suchi and then just attack with everything he has. He's got quite a lot of damage on the board. Playing, what is he going to do now? Okay, another one of those ghosts, ghost minotaurs, 1-1. One, one. Tap to give target minotaur plus 1, plus 1. Of course, they're now at 2-1. And maybe Tom is considering to attack, but exactly, I don't think that's a good decision. Just pass a turn, wait until you draw into an answer to the Suchi, and then you can just attack with everything. Boss now three cards in hand. Looks like he's contemplating about playing out one of those cards, but he is not putting his hand back. Probably just going to pass the turn here, it seems. Because if it would have been like an Abyss, for example, he would have played it out already. I'm, I'm convinced of that. So passing the turn here, pinging again. Putting boss on 12 and drawing a card. So much value for Tom here at the end step uh, of boss every single time. Drawing a, drawing a card and dealing a damage, that's just great. That's uh, the, posi the position you want to be in. Finding even more mana. And we are, we are now just waiting for the moment... When Tom finds the solution, an answer to the Suchi, and that he can just uh, walk all over Boss here. Boss on 12 now. I'm expecting Tom to actually play something more out. He, he still must have a pretty full hand after the Brain Geyser and all the extra cards he's drawing with the Jam Detong. And I think he's got more than enough mana now to just fireball boss directly if he finds a fireball. He's playing with two main. Ooh, look at that. He's going to attack. I like this. Kind of like an alpha strike. I think it's pretty cool. So that's a 1-4, a 2-4, two two ones, And I believe that card, the Shaman... Is a is a two two. I'm not quite sure though. There we see Tom counting it out. So if Boss doesn't block anything, I believe he's going to take one, three, seven, nine points of damage. But I'm sure Boss is gonna block something. Yeah, of course, blocking the Minotaur that's pumping all the other Minotaurs. That's that kind of makes sense. And now he's taking the damage. He's going to drop to five. What is he going to do next? Is he going to end it with a fireball here? Yeah, this integrate. There we go. This integrate here, putting boss on zero. And I mean, I think it's stylish, Tom, that you wanted to have one combat step with your Minotaurs. I get that. I think it's really cool. And what an interesting game, number one. It looked like Bus was going to win it for the longest of times, but those control magics, they really won the game for you here, Tom. They allowed you the time to stabilize and get the upper hand. And then the GM day, Tom, gave you all the card advantage that you needed. But this was definitely a very close game one. Remember, this is just game one. Both players are now going to go and dive into their sideboards. I think Bus is going to board in all his disenchants. And then we're going to catch up with these two gentlemen in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So Bus on the play after losing that game one, which was a big surprise. If you look at the first like 10 minutes of that game, you're convinced that Bus is going to win it. Oh, it looks like Bus has taken another mulligan, just like he did in game one. That's not good. 
I hope for Boss that he can at least find an abyss this game. Playing uh, a plane's passing to turn. And Tom playing an island and a pass. Are we going to see a knight again? There we see a white knight and a scrub land. So Boss, of course, is going to try to put uh, some pressure on. And I took a moment, by the way, to check the Minotaurs, and that Minotaur that pumped all the other Minotaurs is an Anaba Spirit Crafter. It's a 1-3 creature. I also discussed it in the deck deck, but I forgot the power and toughness, so it's just a 1-3. So now I'm going to try to remember, but you just don't see these cards that often, so it's also kind of difficult for me <laughs> looking at these Homeland cards. There we see Tom playing a Mountain in the Pass. There's the attack with the White Knight, putting Tom here on 18, probably. Is Buzz going to play out another Knight? Remember, in Game 1, he was uh, able to put a lot of pressure on also finding a uh, Mishra's Factory early in the game. Finding a Strip Mine. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I think stripping is a good, a good idea here. What he could have done, by the way, is first play the Strip Mine and strip the, the Blue Source or the red source for that matter, then attack because then the mana goes out of the mana pool because now Tom can still cast a memory lapse. Exactly, here we see the memory lapse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little bit of... of Is it a misplay? A little bit, a little bit, Boss. Boss is a great player, by the way, so uh, it's always easy to look back at this and then say, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. But just a little thing to to think about in the future about those uh, those main phases if you're if you're watching this. Anyway, Bossa taking a turn. There's a City of Brass played by Tom. There's an attack and a Mishra's Factory. That is pretty good. He can put some pressure on. Tom dropping to 16 here. And Boss playing, probably going to play out that creature again. No, he's going to play out a Yoshin uh, Soldier instead. So there we have that 1-4 creature again that doesn't have to tap when it attacks. I wonder if... Tom has another memory lapse. I don't think so, or else he would have tapped his mana already. So Tom drawing his card for turn. Let's see what he can do. Can he start playing out some blockers? If not, the next turn, uh, Boss can attack for five. So two cards in hand there for Boss. And six cards in hand for Tom. Okay, now I'm noticing what the red dice is for. I, I, did, I didn't catch that the entire first game. So that red dice is, is showing the amount of cards in hand of Tom. So Tom's got six cards in hand. Anyways, tapping three. Oh, Herloon Minotaur. That is so cool. I remember that's a creature you also see on the revised booster box. It's really a poster child of revised art by Anson Maddox. Beautiful art. And it's a 2-3, which is relevant because it means that Boss cannot attack with the White Knight or the Mishra's Factory. How cool is that? There we see a Swamp being played by Boss. Does he have an Abyss? That would be perfect for him, because that would kill the Hurloon Minotaur. Even though I want the Hurloon to stay, I think it's such a cool card. There's an Order of the White Shield, so the 2-1 Pump Knight from Ice Age. Protection from Black. And I guess he's just a pass for Boss. I mean, I don't really see... Any good attack possibilities for him? Exactly. There's the pass untapped by Tom. And how cool is it to see this Hurloon Minotaur protecting Tom from all those knights? I love it. And hopefully Tom can find some more Minotaurs, you know. We can really get a Minotaur knight battle going on. There's a maze, beautiful altered maze of if. Of course, really fits the theme of the deck Labyrinth. And, I mean, things are looking tricky now for Boss. Really needs to find an abyss. He could consider, of course, attacking with the Ocean Soldier and the uh, Order of, uh, of the White Shield, because he can pump that one. Going to tap two. Okay, there we see the White Knight again that I believe got memory lapsed earlier in the game. So the hand of Boss is now empty. Five cards in hand for Tom still. And there's the pass. Or 
or not. Maybe Bus needs some more time. Yeah, that was the pass. Okay, Tom playing City of Brass. Okay, there's that Minotaur again, a 1-1. One, one. You can tap it to give target other Minotaur, plus one, plus one. So we can use it to pump his Her Herloon Minotaur to a 3-4. Which is kind of relevant, I guess. And Bus, of course, in top decking mode. I think if you're Bus, an attack could be Order of the White Shield and the Ocean Soldier. Then again, Tom can double block and kill the Order of the White Shield. But then Bus can kill the Hurlu Minotaur. So I, I, I think it's kind of worth it. I think. Of course, I don't know what's in, in Tom's hand, uh, in Bus's hand. I don't know what that one card is. Is he going to attack? That is the big question here. Yeah, it looks like he is. He's actually animating. Wow, look at that. Attacking with everything. I didn't see this coming. I thought an attack with the Ocean Soldier and the Order of the of the White Shield, but instead he's attacking with everything, putting full pressure on Tom here. Tom, of course, has that 2-3 Hurlu Minotaur, could, for example, kill the Mishra's Factory. He could kill a White Knight. He could do all that. Of course, he has the Maze as well. Look at that. He's going to kill the Factory, it seems. It's going to block the order of the white shield. So boss is going to give the order first strike. And then he can use the maze. It looks like he's going to use the maze here on the order of the white shield. And then dealing five points of damage to Tom. Putting Tom on 10 here. Losing his Mishra's factory. And there's the pass. So an interesting choice to go uber aggressive by boss. And Tom is now on 10. His life total halved. There we see a Felwer Stone. And that's actually good news for boss because if, it's, if the Felwer Stone is all there is, he could attack now with the Ocean Soldier and the Order of the White Shield. And then he can deal, I know, only one point of damage, but still it is. One point. Actually, he cannot because he can just block the Ocean Soldier on the Hurloon and maze the Order of the White Shield. So, yeah, it's going to be tough here for Bus to find an opening. I was a little bit too optimistic. And again, all that Bus really needs is his Abyss. But he has been unable to find one. He could, of course, consider attacking with everything again. He's only going to lose one creature if he does. Then again, he's also going to deal very little damage with that attack, and he's going to lose a creature for that. So if you look at it from that way, it's, it's a pretty hefty price to pay. For probably only one point of damage. So you can see Bus really like thinking, trying to find a hole in the defense of Tom. We saw him trying to do that in, in, in game one again. And there he was unsuccessful. But of course, the big difference between those two games is that, that Tom had a book. He doesn't have a book now, at least not yet. And Bus playing another creature, a Yoshin Soldier. So again, his hand is empty. And Tom has that card advantage again because he still has four cards in hand. Passing the turn here to Tom. Going to go to five cards in hand. So I guess next turn, Boss could deal one point of damage. Okay, there we see a pass from Tom. Not doing anything. I wonder what's in Tom's hand. 
I mean, boss could attack here with two Yoshin soldiers and the Order of the White Shield, and the Order of the White Shield probably get, gets turned back. Tom can then block one of the Yoshins on the Hurloon, and then one Yoshin gets unchecked, and he can deal one point of damage, putting Tom on nine. I think that would be my, my line of play if I was boss. And it's only one damage, absolutely, but it is a damage, and he is on 10, so from 10 to 9. It's something. No, he's just passing the turn, though. I mean, of course, I guess I understand that boss isn't attacking, because one of the things that Tom can do is double block the ocean and then kill his ocean soldier. A little bit of uh, some glitches here on the side of Tom. Okay, so Tom playing, um, I think this card's called the Bodyguard. It's a 2-3, I believe, as well. So he's got two 2-3 two, Minotaurs and a 1-1 one, one Minotaur. And this, again, is a card from Homeland. So kind of the Homeland's version of, uh, <laughs> of the early Minotaur. Oh, man. But, I mean... This is difficult here for boss on top deck mode. Again, he, I'm just going to, I know I keep repeating myself, but again, all he needs is an abyss or a tutor to look up an abyss. Tapping to, okay, even more creatures. So boss just building a huge army of knights and, and, and Yoshian soldiers here. Waiting for the right moment to strike. And interestingly enough, in this game, Tom has found, it seems, has found zero control magics so far. Ooh, it's going to take some damage. Are we going to see a memory lapse? No, we're going to see a drain life. Taking care of that Order of the White Shield. He is taking two points of damage, though, from his uh, two City of Brass. It's going to drop to eight. That's actually not a terrible trade for Bus here. You know, yes, he's losing a creature, but... Thomas losing a card and taking two points of damage. And there we see the Anaba Spirit Crafter. So this is this 1-3 creature that gives plus 1 plus 0 to all the other Minotaurs. So that means we've got two 3-3 three, three Minotaurs and a 2-1 Minotaur that can be tapped to give another Minotaur plus 1 plus 1. There we see an Order of Light Burr by Boss. Bus, of course, just top decking, so whatever he finds, he's going to slam it on the table. And we have six creatures on the side of Bus, four creatures on the side of Tom, and of course that Maze of If. And the creatures of Tom are slightly bigger, you know. Those three toughness creatures are pretty difficult to deal with for Bus, with his knights that are usually just two power. We see another island from Tom, and it looks like a pass. And Boss looking at the situation again. Playing out his factory, which is basically another creature. So that's not too bad for Boss. You know, the more creatures, try to put some more pressure on. I think an attack now for Boss wouldn't be, wouldn't be good, wouldn't do much. So... Passing a turn exactly is probably the best thing that he can do. There we see Tom rearranging his creatures. Probably based on power. So we see the 1-1 creature all the way on the left. Then the Spirit Crafter, which is a 1-3. Then the two Hurloon Minotaurs, basically, that are both 2-3s. Remember, all the Minotaurs are getting plus 1, plus 0 from the Spirit Crafter. It's, you know, it's tough here for Boss, especially those 3-3 three, three Hurloons. They're very painful for his knights. And there we see a pass by Tom. Boss drawing another card here. Looks like he's also just passing. This game is really in a standstill. Ooh, oh no, Abyss. For a moment, I thought we were going to see the Abyss. Asuchi instead. Oh, look at that. Tom's gone. Tom, where did you go? And we are back. Look at that. Tom's back. I did some cutting in the video. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't want to see 
five minutes of black screen. So <laughs> anyway, we're back. Tom's back. Let's see where this game goes. So we saw Boss just casting a Suchi. I'm expecting him just to pass. I mean, if you're Boss, you're basically waiting for this ideal moment for an Alpha Strike. Tom, of course, being on eight. But I'm sure Boss also knows that, you know, Tom hasn't played out a single Control Magic. Remember, in game one, he found all four. If he can find a Control Magic, you know, he can, uh, he can catch that Suchi. That Suchi is a really nice target. Is he going to play it right now? There we see. The, you, you talk about it, it's there. Control magic. This is so bad for boss. I mean, this must be a pretty frustrating match thus far for boss because in game one, he got really close to killing Tom. Remember, Tom was on three, I believe. And now in game two, again, he's put Tom quite low, but he just misses that, you know, final push. One card in hand and, uh, and a pass. And of course, the biggest thing that he misses in all these games so far is his Abyss. There we see another City of Brass. But of course, it's also difficult for Tom to kind of find an opening on the side of, uh, of Boss. But Tom being the player with, you know, the Brain Geyser, the Jam Day Tome, but also, of course, the Direct Damage... For him, it's not that bad when you're on a standstill. Because he's going to simply draw into like more control magics, more direct damage, maybe even, you know, the Jam Day Tome that he just ma mentioned. And all those cards are great because they're going to improve the current board state. And, and Boss just has less of those kind of cards in his deck. Another Scrubland. Which is not too bad because of the Pump Knights, but in, in this situation, he's probably hoping for something else. Passing the turn here to Tom. Tom passing the turn back to Boss. So four cards in hand for Tom. I believe two cards in hand now for Boss. Or just a one. And he's just going to pass again. One blue tap by Tom. Okay, there we see a soul ring and a pass. There's another land. So he almost has a play set of scrub lands in play. That's kind of cool. And I think, again, for Bust, there's not much to do than, other than just to pass the turn. Both players are kind of waiting for that card that can kind of break through this standstill. Is he going to attack here with the Pump Knights? It looks like he's thinking about it. I think the biggest problem for him here is, of course, the Maze, so he can Maze one. He can do a big block. Ooh, he is attacking with both. Oh, we're going to see some action. So remember, both of these creatures, Order of the White Shield and the Order of Lightbird, you can pay two white to give it plus one plus O oh, and one white to give it first strike. And he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight white sources. Now Tom has to decide. It looks like he's going to put his bodyguard in front. No, he's going to double block. Yeah, look at that. So with one bodyguard, he's going to block the Order of the White Shield on one, and then he's going to double block the other one with the Suchi and the Herlu Minotaur. Now remember, uh, Tom can still use his Maze of If after blockers are declared. So he can do it before the damage step. So he's now giving Bus, kind of forcing Bus to put mana into his Order of the White Shield and his Order of Light Burr. And then Tom, of course, can decide which of those two he wants to send back. So this is great strategy by Tom. Tom also still has that 1-1 one, one, uh, Minotaur Ghost that he can use to tap to give target Minotaur plus 1 plus 1. So Bus basically has to invest a lot of mana in his Order of White Shield to kill the Bodyguard of Tom. And does he then still have enough mana for the Order of Lightbird to kill one of the creatures on the side of Tom? I doubt it. This is going to be really tough for him. 
So he's got to put five mana in the order of White Shield, and he only has three mana left. Ooh. This is, this is a bad scenario for Boss here, actually. As far as I can tell, we're just going to have to wait how this ends up. But it's looking quite bad for Boss, because if Boss decide to, for example, kill the Bodyguard, so he's got to pump five mana in his order of the White Shield, give it first strike for one, then give it, make it a 4-1, because Tom can give a plus one, plus one with that Ghost Minotaur. But that would mean, if he does that, it would mean he loses his Order of Light Burr, because his Order of Light Burr, he can then only make a 3-1 first strike, or a 4-1. I guess he would then make it a 4-1, and then deal all the damage on the Suchi. And of course, Tom can still respond to all of this with the Maze of If activation. So he's simply waiting for Boss to first tell Tom how he wants to pump, what he wants to do, and after Tom has all that information, he can decide to use the maze still. So th this is a win-win for Tom, I feel. Worst case scenario, he's going to lose one of his Minotaurs. That's the worst case scenario, I think. Or may yeah, maybe the Suchi, but I mean, again, he's got that maze activation. Or, of course, Boss needs to have some kind of trick in his hand. He is really stuck here. Counting his planes, trying to think, what are my options here? He's going to play something. No, taking it back. I wonder what he's got in hand. And actually, a maze of if would be great on Boss's side as well. It would give Boss so much options. I mean, maze of if in some decks is even better uh, in your when you're attacking because every uh, every bad block you can use your maze to take your creature out of combat and protect it that way, and also untap it at the same time. Tapping the white. What's in his hand there? I really wonder. Swords to Plowshares. Oh, so waited for the double block to do his swords. Now I understand this attack. Destroying the Suchi. He is putting Tom back on 12, but this changes the situation here. This changes the situation. Still, though, it's going to be tough because the Minotaur, and here we see Tom losing connection again, unfortunately, but here we can see the Minotaur of Tom, and there he's back. The Minotaur of Tom, both of those are still are 3-3 three, three creatures. He can pump it to a 4-4 four, four with that Ghost uh, Minotaur. So he can make one of those two 4-4. Four, four. So he's going to lose. I feel like he's going to lose one of the two Pump Knights regardless. So he's going to give one first strike and plus one plus oh. That's now a 3-1 first striker. And is he not pumping the other one? So this is now a 3-1 first strike. I'm sure he's going to pump that one as well, isn't he? I mean, if not, it's simply going to die when blocked by the bodyguard. Of course, Bus can still respond to a potential pump. So maybe Bus is waiting for that moment. Look at that. So he's pumping it up. So he's giving, making that now a 3-1 first striker as well. So these are two 3-1 first strikers. And now I think if you're Tom, you want to use your 1-1 that, that one, one Minotaur. Exactly. Tap it to give one of those two creatures plus one, plus one. Make it a 4-4. Four, four. That means you can kill one of the creatures. Use your mace on the other creature. And, and it's still good, you know. It's still good business. Ooh, look at that bus now. What is he doing? No, so they're just going to keep it the way it is, which sounds fair. I mean, I think if you're bus, you're just going to have to accept here that you're going to lose one of you two, uh, one of your two pump knights. And, and, and that's it, you know. 
I mean, you've tried to make a move. And this is how, how it has ended up. So I think if, if, if you're Tom, exactly, I would, yeah, and then block. So you're going to lose one, use the maze on the other. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's just, it's so tough to get by those big minotaurs with all the tricks and, of course, the maze. And now Tom is going to take his turn. Is Tom going to win this game? If he does, he's actually going to win the match. The thing is, boss is still on 20, and it's really tough for Tom as well to kind of attack boss. You know, I mean, white knights, all those knights at first strike, they're great blockers. I mean, I, I think if you're Tom... You just want to pass pass here unless you've got something good in hand, of course. Ooh, tapping six. What are we going to see? Tapping quite a lot here. Brain Geyser are Okay, Fireball. Wow, so he's playing a Fireball for six, eight. Yep. Killing three knights. This is, this is brutal. So now Bus only has his two Yoshin soldiers and his factory. It's still going to be tough, though, for, for Tom to break through. Those Yoshin soldiers are excellent blockers. There we see an attack with two 3-3 three, three Hurloon Minotaurs. That, of course, Tom can make a 4-4. Four, four. So if he blocks them, for example, on a Yoshin soldier, he can make it a 4-4, four, four, kill a Yoshin soldier. An option for Boss here is to animate his factory and double block. And let one creature go through. The problem with that scenario is that Tom can simply take the creature that's being blocked out of combat with the mace and still deal damage with the other Minotaur. I think mace is really an MVP of this game number two where we saw Control Magic being the MVP in game one. In this game number two, it's definitely the maze of if. And that is why mace is such a good card because it's versatile. You can use it offensively and defensively. And things are just looking bad for Boss again. Remember, he's in top deck mode. He's got, you know, he's got less cards. Exactly. This is what he's going to do. Animate the factory. Double block, pump the factory. And then Tom is simply going to say, you know what? I'm going to take my creature out of combat with my mace. I don't care. And he's going to deal three points of damage, maybe even four points of damage to Boss. But I, I expect only three. I think Tom wants to keep his, um, his little 1-1 one -one Minotaur untapped. And I think Bus knows this, so he's trying to find a way around it. He's trying to, to decide what's best. But I think there is no way around it. So there we see a double block, and here we see Tom asking, which creature are you double blocking? I think he's double blocking the bodyguard. It doesn't really matter. They're both 3-3, three, three, so it's all right. So he is going to pump. 2A44. Four, four. Does that mean that he actually wants to trade? Ooh, untapping again. I mean, I think you just should maze and be happy with the three points of damage. Put boss on 17 past the turn, or maybe play something second. Second main, but. Not quite sure what's happening here. <laughs> Look at that. He's just taking the damage. Going to drop to 14. Interesting. Not quite sure what, what, what happened there. It seemed like Boss had a change of mind, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Or, or maybe Tom did. 
I think I think it looked like a, a plausible decision by by Bus to be honest, making that double block. And then Tom could have traded a bodyguard, basically for a Yoshin soldier or a factory, which is reasonable. But of course, Bus still having quite a high life total. I do also understand this, the decision to just take the six points of damage. There is another land by Tom. And of course, Natek, same medicine. And it looks like he is going to double block now. And both players again discussing the situation. Ooh, he's tapping the Fowler Stone. What is he going to do? Play a Disenchant. That is brutal. Disenchant on the factory. That means he can kill one of the two Yoshins and deal three points of damage. Ooh, that is heavy. Boss dropping to 11. Yeah, it's really the end of the road for Boss here. Uh, yeah, maybe if he can find an abyss really quickly, but even then it's going to be tough. So Tom untapping everything, and now he can just attack again with his Hurloons, maybe even his Spirit Crafter. Yeah, look at him go. Attacking with everything here, and... Well, except, of course, the 1-1, one, because one, he can use it to pump one of the Minotaurs. I think the Yosu Soldier is probably going to bl block the Spirit Crafter. Then he's going to take 7 points. going to drop to 4. There we see a block. He's going to pump. Yes, yeah, so he's going to deal 7 points of damage. Dropping to 4, passing the turn. And, oh, finally found the Abyss. Bus, you've done it, man. You finally found your Abyss. I kind of feel for Bus because you're building a deck around a card and you don't find a card. I've had that too, Bus. I know the feeling. It can be quite frustrating. And these games were very intense, by the way, because I've actually fast-forwarded it. So um, this is, uh, I've, I've played it out faster than real time. And here we see Bus. Showing his cards on the table saying, I got the disenchant now, this time around, but there was no control magic. So this is it. And Bus going to try to find out where his swords were, where his abysses were. There we see a COP red coming in from the sideboard. So like I said, Bus, you know, I know the feeling where you build a deck around a card and you just don't see the card the entire match. It's like sometimes there are even tournaments where you build around a, de a card and you don't see it the entire tournament. It can be quite frustrating, but still, I really enjoyed watching this match. Thank you, Tom and Bus, for bringing this uh, to the channel. It's really cool to see the, uh, the Minotaurs here win because it's just such a cool tribe that you don't see often. I also really like your deck, uh, Bus, the Abyss Knights. I actually talked in Forgotten Combos about that combo, Abyss and the White Knight, so it's really cool to kind of see that in action, although we couldn't see it in action because you couldn't find the Abyss until the very last turn of the match, which is in itself kind of epic as well. So thank you, Tom and Boss, for bringing your decks to the table, and also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And before you go, I would like to ask you to like, comment, and share this video on your socials because all these things are completely free and they really help the channel move forward. So if you want to help me, if you want to help uh, Timmy Talks, then please do those three things. And of course, if you're new to the channel, take a moment to subscribe as well. That is very, very much appreciated. And then there is one last thing that you can do, and you can see that right now on your screen, you can join the Timmy Talks Patreon page. You can become a patron of the show, and that already starts with just $1 a month. And for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord as well, and you can join all these silly tournaments. Who doesn't want to join a silly tournament? and play with Homelands and Ice Age and all that nonsense. And of course, play with all the 93, 94 sets. Um, I try to organize a tournament every other month. So, you know, there, there, there's quite a lot happening. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, 
please consider becoming a patron of Timmy Talks. And then there's one other really big cool thing that happens when you become a patron. And that is that your name will be mentioned in every end scroll at the end of every single video on Timmy Talks. What end scroll? This end scroll. Somebody can see.